Okay, people, this will be part two of the inconsistencies in <clears throat> Mormon Truth and Authority claims. So this is going to be another one of the shorter videos. From the hotel room, this... Never trust your dad with a Mac computer. Okay, what my daughter is referring to is... Well, I... Look, look. When, you, when, you, when, you, when you donate to the Dodger Dave channel, this is the kind of stuff you're actually doing. You're donating to my HGA boost, my fat burning, my adrenal system, more testosterone. I ran out for a while and COVID hit and like... 95% of my road rage in LA traffic delivering Postmates disappeared. Just saying. I wasted hours and hours and hours of my time. Thinking Th this shit I don't even know. This is for you to destroy it. Yeah, this is for it your brain. It's a lot of sauce Good stuff. you. You don't put liquids next to electronics. So what she's talking about here is the fault Hello. of Trader Joe's. No, it's the fault of you. By this me. shit went into my computer motherboard Which you via the keyboard. In the first place. Hello. I just wanted a taco. Before I, started, yeah, before I started a video, and it's that video computer. never came out. All right, anyway, yeah. Seriously, that's why I didn't let you have it. There went a Mac that Dodger Girl got me Ugh. in Salt Lake City from some used... And that was good. The electronics, dude. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, the electronics, dude? You mean you fried the motherboard? Electronics, dude. Okay, anyway. Here's my Beverly Hills MD shit. Cheap shit I got from... Yeah, I don't know, 99 cent store. Oh, parts sale, out sale it. items. Oh, sale items at Sprouts. We're going to get into it, really. We're going to get into it. And what we're going to, sale items at Sprouts, that cost me my windshield because I bought this crystal when I was buying all this boutique deodorant. The damn like 80 crystal doesn't need to be in the, Dad, you're. Okay, so, all right. Well, hold on. I got I to gotta make this video now. So we're gonna put all this stuff away. I just uh, get it out here. All kinds of other stuff, and that's you how. You need a risk management manager at all times. And it's not gonna be me. <laughs> Audience forgiver. This is what happens when you raise your kids in the Mormon church, and they all get stressed out and shit. Okay, so <laughs> items that <laughs> items in Mormon is... church, not mom. Oh, please! I believe that was your choice. Actually, I wound up with her because I ditched my previous girlfriend because of the Ugh. Spencer Kimball doctrine that you should uh, dump people that you're banging before you're married. Right Unless you marry him right then and I was like 18. Okay, here we go. So, <laughs> the previous video, I went ahead and, and, and um, you know mentioned several items that are inconsistent with Mormon truth and authority claims that are an all-knowing, unchanging God who's, who's supposedly a good guy. Video. Please stop me. I, I got, I got to... See, I don't want to piss people off here. Um, <laughs> guides the Mormon you prophets. Want, you don't want to piss people off. I don't want them to feel that this is You don't want to piss people off, Dad. Yeah. Have you not seen your posts? <laughs> Can you stop, please? So what I'm going to talk about today will be some items that, that I have previously discussed in longer videos that actually drew my attention to the fact that there was something rotten in Denmark regarding the LDS church history, scriptures, theology, etc. So, basically, I got into the church when I was 15. We started investigating the church when I was like 14. And that was preceded by me having, well, various experiences, some spiritual experiences that were scary so i started reading that the, led him to have his daughter who's right behind him so i started reading in the new testament and all that sort of thing my That's friends my movie. friend's dad was a methodist preacher i've been going to their church a little bit and i told him he couldn't baptize me i was polite i didn't tell him why but i just didn't feel like he had authority from some divine source because i hung out at their house and saw what kind of shit went down anyway that really went, goes along with the, with, the, with the whole, you know, Mormon thing of we're restoring the restored gospel of Jesus Christ and the holy priesthood and all this kind of stuff. And then he's just a false priest, kind of like the uh, priest that was working for Satan in the LDS endowment previous to 1991 when they changed the endowment. Made it a little less uh, aggravating towards uh, other churches, even though the Book of Mormon says that all the other churches are part of the church of the devil. Anyway, yeah. So, 
we wound up having these missionary lessons because my mom went to a Mormon open house from her friend who was in the John Birch Society. And that's where it all really starts here because <laughs> I was learning about, you know, basically the uh, manifest destiny doctrine that America was built by God. I mean, he, he, he helped the, the colonists escape the nasty redcoats and uh, inspired George Washington. In fact, even perhaps Moroni came and talked with George on the banks of the Delaware or somewhere, some fucking place, right? Winter. All right, so, it, 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 not, not winter quarters, that's LDS stuff. Anyway, wherever that place was, where they were cold as heck, right? LDS people, please note the effort to not drop an F-bomb there because I know you've been programmed to believe that the word indicating the acronym fornication under consent of the king, which is the only kind of sex that the Mormon church approves of, it still made it into a bad word because the Christians did and they need to copy the Christians. Fuck, I can't find a fire water. Parenting, it's such a bitch. Okay, so... It's never ending. Things have bothered me. I noticed that, well, it took a while because so the Book of Mormon really takes this manifest destiny doctrine and says, okay, great, you're right, God blessed the colonists and unfortunately his wrath was upon the Lamanites. And this is where it gets really convoluted. The Lamanites are the Book of Mormon people that came over from Israel on like the raw expedition boat and, well, some of them got naughty, so God's, God said, Black magic, poof! You're a darky. Yeah, so, anyway, that made these people um, repulsive to the Nephites, according to the Book of Mormon, because it's written, basically, it is a 19th century uh, cheesy novel, and it's indicating the beliefs uh, of the, you know, general population at that time. So, if you if you have dark skin, you're... You're, Is that why you don't get collectors? You're, you're, you're just, uh, you're, you're, yeah. So, you're, you're undesirable, and so God did this to, to, to make sure that the good people didn't mix with the people who weren't worshiping Him properly and fulfilling His, you know, biblical narcissistic, you know, bullshit. Right? Where he'd, like kill you if you cook dinner for your kids and. You know, avoided a little botulism in the days of Moses, but they made a group activity out of murdering you because you should have been like going, you know, worshiping his lame ass, right? But that's pretty, yeah, all, all, all this racism actually stems from, from, from the Jewish religion, what we find in the Old Testament. God says, kill the Midianites, kill the Ammonites, kill anybody who's not worshiping me, right? Because he's a narcissist and a misogynist and a racist and a fucking psychopath. And I'm not a psychopath. Mm -hmm. I just need another beer. Fortunately, I've got another beer. Mm -hmm. But I've also got coffee to put the edge back on after I take it off. Not only do I have that, I can hardly wait. But this is healthy shit. I've got this is this is vegetable-based protein chocolate, and I put some Trader Joe's instant coffee in it and then I put in some collagen and whatever right and in here yeah you think why the hell has Dave got this funnel going into another beer but it's really not beer it's this protein stuff from it's like sprouts or something so really I was just too lazy to go to the bathroom and find my other bottle okay you lost it. So with that, now it's in the, it, so, so, yeah. So really, you, you, you don't turn into, a, like, a total drug addict and, uh, you know, every other trisexual or whatever when you, when you leave the LDS church. You don't, most people, the church taught that everybody left the church that leaves the church only because they wanted to sin. They wanted to bang their next door neighbor's wife and shit. Or... You know, they, they wanted to drink alcohol or say, oh, yeah. Satan's urine, coffee, right? <laughs> that kind of shit. Hold on, I gotta put the edge back on. So, um, You're not your point very bad. there we go. What bothered me was I began to realize that the, you know, I spilled 
the other shit on this computer. Let's let's be smart and put this over there. <laughs> on the other computer. Okay. I begin to notice that through my historical studies, I was finding that some of the things in the Book of Mormon specifically were inconsistent uh, with what I was finding. And so we've, like I said, we've got this convoluted narrative. God's merciful to the Lamanites, but he's chastening them. His wrath is upon them. He hates the Lamanites, but he loves the Nephites. This, all this bullshit's in the Book of Mormon, and it's self-contradictory. But God really loves them, and his tender mercies will be upon them. Okay, well, like when Columbus came? Well, yeah, because it talks about this Gentile who comes... And it, you know, in, in the Book of Mormon, like, hey, let's check out these highlights. It actually says it's Columbus, okay? And that God sent him over here. So basically that the gospel could come to the Nephites. Or to, excuse me, to the Lamanites. Um, so we wipe out like 90% of these people who never heard of Jesus fucking Christ anyway, right? But that's mercy upon the 10% and fuck the rest of these people. And that's the way the gospel works anyway, because only a small select, uh, you know, percentage of people are going to <coughs> make it to the top in Mormon heaven. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I did notice that in the Mormon thing was better than the Christian thing, because instead of everybody going to hell that doesn't ever hear about Jesus and never even had a fucking chance, well, now the Mormon missionaries uh, in you know, who die, the, the more, all the Mormon men turn in, the, that are worthy, turn into priesthood missionaries in the spirit world, treat, talk to people in spirit prison and hell and wherever the fuck they are, right? And they go, oh, I never heard of Jesus, but oh, I still want to be a member of your fucking church, even if I was gay and all this shit, right? So even though the Old Testament said to kill these people, we don't give a shit. Everything changes in the spirit world. You've got a new chance. And Mormons get to baptize you in the temples and all that kind of shit. Keep going back and back as long as they pay their tithing and uh, say, don't bang anybody. They're not licensed to bang by the government. Oh. Or uh, drink Satan's urine. Or even a mild drink of barley, which is actually recommended in the Mormon words of wisdom. It's just that the interpretation changed during Prohibition. Oh, they were kissing ass to the government. Where that shit come from? Okay. Hold on one more slide. So I started noticing that there were some inconsistencies, you know, I mean, like, God, God's pretty much a dick to these people, you know, and, uh, you know, Columbus's guys, I mean, they're butchers, right? Fucking butchers. Uh, that's, that's not, that's not merciful. That, 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 that's kind of fucked up. And then it's like, oh, well, God established this nation through and, and, and inspired the prophets uh, they inspired, excuse me, inspired, you know, wise men to create the Constitution because this was set up as a beacon for all of their land so that basically Zion could be in Missouri as the political capital of the world in the millennium and uh, the word of the Lord would come from Jerusalem. In other words, we have this dual capital thing here, right? Depending if you're into the, like, here they are here or here they are here if you're a globe dart. Anyway, <laughs> so... When I really got into, you know, I read the, the treaty at Versailles and stuff and noticed, you know, these guys, Ben Franklin and those boys, they wouldn't have signed this shit the way they did if America won the war, if the colonists won the war, like we're told. I'm like, wait, so you just signed us into like uh, financial servitude to British banks after winning a war? What is up with that shit, right? If you, and then you read. Who are these other guys from Britain who, you know, go over to represent the king? Representing, well, George, King George, who is what? The prince of the Holy Roman Empire. And that's where we kind of take things back another step. So when you really study it, you find out America's just another British colony, which is uh, basically a Roman colony. And you don't have any property rights. You never own property. That's why it's called real estate, not real property that you own in allodium. Why is that? Because it's held in estate. Why is that? Because you never own it. That's why if you look at a deed, I'm not talking about just a mortgage. I'm, I'm talking about a deed. You're a tenant. You're a tenant. Woo. What's up with that shit, right? I was, I was a real estate professional, you know, and I'm like, okay, a lot of these things just don't add up. They don't add up at all. America is not an independent nation. It isn't. We don't own property, okay? And there are multiple problems with this whole scenario. Why when don't you find, we have accents? It's messed up. When you find out 
when you find out that your cities, states, counties, school districts are all actually privately owned, uh, you know, corporate municipalities, municipal corporations, privately owned that invest all over the world and not for your benefit. So they're all functioning as transnational investment banks and they only show you the part of the balance sheet is that taxes in and expenditures out, which they always make sure is upside down. So they have to tax you some more, but they own, you know, collectively like what up in 2009 estimations were that 185,000 of these municipal corporations in the United States owned, you know, investments worldwide of maybe $110 trillion. That's many times the national debt to the privately owned consortium of mostly foreign invested banks in the Federal Reserve System. When the Constitution says that, you know, basically the government can coin money, but they don't. Instead, they've got these uh, European backed interests in a bank that they pay interest to. Money is created out of nothing at interest. Who pays that? The people who are called taxpayers. We didn't have, we, 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 we didn't have an income tax until 1916. Why is that? Because you don't need one, that's why, and it's basically unconstitutional. This is the first speech I gave in speech class in ninth grade, as a matter of fact. I took my little Liberty Amendment book and uh, discussed, you know, the ins and outs of, of, how, of how that works. But there was a need to collect some money at that point to what? Feed the bankers, because in 1913 on Jekyll Island, or, pre uh, you know, actually after the Jekyll Island thing, but in 1913, they actually passed the Federal Reserve Act, which a bunch of, you know, J.P. Morgan affiliates kind of got together on and created and, 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 and got through uh, Rockefeller's in-laws um, <coughs> to sponsor the bill, right? So, <coughs> that's, that's how you got that shit started. It enslaved the people. Actually, 20 years later, from the 1913, we had 1933 when the United States was completely bankrupted. The United States Company, formerly the Virginia Company. The colonies really haven't gone away. So, oh, who was head of the Federal Reserve at that point? Why, it's the same dude who's got uh, his name on the Federal Reserve building in Washington, D.C. And yes, he was a Mormon talking about Mariner Eccles, like Eccles Stadium there, mm -hmm. the U of U, the Mormon Illuminati lives, people. Anyway, so I noticed there were some major inconsistencies, like America's not really what the Book of Mormon says, God's not merciful to the Lamanites, he's really a total fucking dick like he was to everybody else except the Jews in the Old Testament, actually in the New Testament too, like Jesus has the Canaanitish woman come talk to him. Or she could be a Phoenician woman, depending if you're reading Matthew or Luke. But he's like a total dick to her. She's like, can you heal my son? He's like, fuck no. I didn't come here for the dogs. You don't live in La Costa, okay? I came here for the house of Israel. And she's like, uh, oh, come on. Even the dogs eat off the master's table. He's like, all right, whatever, bitch. I'll heal your kid. And that's kind of how it goes. So Jesus was a total fucking racist, too. So don't say he wasn't read this shit it's in your new testament matthew and luke it's there okay knowing your scriptures really makes it impossible to worship this guy as some kind of a good boy because he's really a dick actually the heavenly father guy and then jesus approves of him supposedly he says there's none good but my father right and he's referring to the uh You're just the jew god yeah i'm just jealous <laughs> kind of yeah yeah elder broomhead said Dave, are you sure you're not, like, nurturing some kind of messiah complex? I go, no, I'm sure I am, actually. I've had that since I was a kid. When I was, like, seven years old, I and named my pet turtle Adolf Hitler, and I started taking German classes on Saturday so I could take over the fucking world. Yeah. You know, and I played, like, Risk. You're not sounding really terrible right now. That's okay. That's, that's, that's what I did, you know. Second and third grade. Hey, I had some 20-year-old coming over to play chess with me in the front yard. Come on. That's gotta that's gotta speak for something. Yeah. Tone it down. Alright. Next. The LDS Temple Endowment was problematic. 
It was very problematic. Sure, I could say it started when I was in the endowment and a voice spoke to me and said, Google the five points of fellowship. That's something that disappeared after 1991, April or so, right? And I'm like, well, okay, well, the devil can't come here. That's what we've been told. So I'll Google it and it's all Freemasonry. <laughs> they didn't even mention Mormonism. Or, you know. Anyway, that was something that was presented at the Vale where you get all the secret handshakes. Mm -hmm, shit, which Joseph Smith stole from Freemasonry. So I'm like, why did Joe have to join the Freemasons to gain this shit, right? I didn't realize, you know, they, they don't, they said maybe he was a Mason or something. No, or this, 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 this lady uh, in her, uh, she made a comment on my channel. Oh, Joseph and Brigham just talked to their Freemasons. Brigham was like pretty high ranking Freemason. Joe was a. Are you just trying to come up with things that you can say? He was a lower, he was a lower degree. So bottom line, bottom line, Joseph Smith joins this Luciferian religion. And it's called, you know, the Masonic Religion by Albert Pike, written in Morals and Dogma, the uh, ancient and accepted Scottish Rite. Freemasonry, which was given to every Freemason 14th degree and up for like 100 years. Oh, but no, that's all textile hoax and all that shit, right? Where it says, you know, we adore, Lucifer is the god that we adore. And, and uh, we preserve, you know, in, in the Masonic Religion, the pure Luciferian doctrine. So Joseph Smith, who was told to stay away from other religions, joins the Luciferian religion of Freemasonry according to Freemasonry's mm -hmm. highest authority at the time. In a book which the craft distributed for a hundred years that says that Lucifer is the god that we adore. And unfortunately, the fucking Jew god, Adonai, he's uh, got this dualistic equality even though he's a dick as we can see in the Old Testament. That's pretty much what it says. You can read it yourself, I've read it. So that's not just the tax seal hoax and bullshit. Albert Pike read this shit, right? Um, <clears throat> but people that don't know anything fall for that Masonic apologetic bullshit. So I'm like, so Joseph Smith can get a revelation where your husband can go, ladies, on a mission, you know, or a revelation that he's supposed to bang some chick that's married to some other dude, so he's gonna get sealed to her. Or the Word of Wisdom, which recommends beer, which he drank, um, like I said, until they started ass kissing the federal government during uh, Prohibition and said, it doesn't really mean what it says, that, you, yeah, that, you know, mild drinks of barley are good for you. And, um, but he has, but he can't get a revelation for what the most sacred part of the temple are, the Masonic secret fucking handshakes. Are and why? Why are they the most sacred? Well, because they gotta be secret. They gotta be sacred secrets. Why? Because they were making like covenants to like slit their throats, rip out their hearts, have their tongues ripped out, their bowels, all this kind of shit. If they told, you know, in conjunction, the meaning of the signs, tokens, and penalties, and their interrelation. Like Captain Morgan did. You like to drink Captain Morgan? Well, Joseph Smith was banging his widow. She was a widow because the Masons killed his ass because he wrote a book uh, revealing some shit like that. Okay? So that made that stuff sacred secrets in Mormonism. So that's the truth of it. But we're told, oh, it's the holy endowment. So Joe goes to another religion that worships Lucifer, who Mormons believe is the devil because that's what Christians told them, even though the Bible doesn't support that at all. Lucifer is Venus, basically. And the mention of Lucifer in the Old Testament, I believe it's in Isaiah, is like, oh, this prophecy against the uh, king of Babylon, he will, you know, rise like Lucifer. You know, he'll be Lucifer, he'll rise and then fall. Just like, you know, Venus is the morning and evening star. It, 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 it brings the light and, yeah, when I lived in Costa Rica, you can see that it's super bright there. It's brighter than it is even in Utah, way brighter, and way, way brighter than it is in anywhere in California. So I used to get up and watch Lucifer Rising. Later, I went back there and just watched the Lucifer series and did fun shit on the couch with Dodger Girl. So, um, <laughs> I'm such a That's sinner. Funny. I'm going to hell. And... I'm not coming back, according to Mormon doctrine, which puts me worse than Adolf Hitler, Fidel Castro, Donald fucking Trump, Bill Clinton, everybody but Hillary Clinton. She's worse somehow, but anyway. Because I'm in outer darkness. Because I'm telling the truth about the church and you covenant 
I will not speak evil against the Lord's anointed. Okay, so I'm going to pause today because I tell the truth about how the church fucking lies to you, right? Uh, I help people. I'm nice to people. I didn't turn into the... Oh, oh yeah. So LDS scripture says, oh, you'll kick against the pricks. I do that. The pricks run the church, right? I do kick against them. You'll, you'll persecute the saints. That's not what I'm doing. Unless you want to call those motherfuckers the top saints and I'm just, you know, basically revealing what fucking liars they are. And then you'll fight against their God. Well, I do fight against their God because he's a piece of shit. If you read the Old Testament, you figure that shit out. Anyway, so I found historically Book of Mormon's full of shit. Doesn't match up, okay? We don't have what we're told we've got here. And that's all part of the big lie that keeps slaves enslaved who think that they're free, right? I mean, a lot of people know, hey, the Federal Reserve Bank is, you know, bullshit. But they're looking for, they're, they're like, oh, the Gadiant and robbers at the Book of Mormon ranches, that's who's doing all this shit. But Jesus will come and save us, and we all live happily ever after in Missouri. Sorry, people. The Missouri Temple was supposed to have been built a long fucking time ago. Joseph Smith has to go to the Luciferian religion of Freemasonry to steal signs and tokens and shit, basically to lock people into the cult in association with Mormon covenants. Probably the most important one, the law of consecration. In other words, if Joe wants it or his successors, you gotta give it. Whether it's your time, your wife, your house, whatever it is, going on a mission for three fucking years, now it's like two. You give it, you give it. but. We're just living the lower law now with tithing, just taxing your asses out of, you know, what you needed for a fucking down payment. Of course, when I was younger, oh, you had to pay building funds. So after, so you go in with the bishop, it's like, okay, David, how much can you spare? It's like, oh, should we read about the widow's mite just for, you know, warm ups here? So basically, if you're saving for a down payment for a house, you're holding out on Jesus. Um, yeah, so, uh, when I discovered that the Book of Mormon was not truthful, when I, when I saw LDS leaders like Gordon B. Hinckley lying and using high-level sales techniques, neuro-linguistic programming, hypnotic language, hypnotic repetition, etc., to sell the, uh, church members on the war declared by George and Dick, uh, on countries in the Middle East... Um, comparing the people of Iraq to the Gadianton robbers in the Book of Mormon and the Americans launching a preemptive war, which, by the way, is condemned by the Book of Mormon, saying that uh, the Lord would deliver you into the hands of the Gadianton robbers even if you went after them and instead of let them come at you. Um, yeah, the, the Americans are, are like the Nephites. And so he says, you know, I, we have no quarrels with you Muslims, but my sentiments, in case anyone wondered, lie with the Book of Mormon people, the Nephites. And then he quotes Captain Moroni, you know, he's like, we're here to defend our wives and our children, our religion, yay, our all. Yeah. Against these motherfuckers who, you know, supposedly with these, uh, yeah, CGI planes took down the towers that actually went down through demolition process and they try to avoid talking about Tower 3 since it never got hit. So, <sighs> Mormonism, like all religion, promotes uh, loyalty to the government, basically deifying the government in the eyes of the people. In this case, they're deifying the Republic before that, you know, if it's Egypt, you're deifying the Pharaoh. If it's Britain, you're deifying the King. Um, yeah, if it's Playboy, you're, you know, whatever, Hustler, you're, you know, you're, you're deifying Hugh Hefner, fuck, I don't know. Anyway, that's why they get tax exemption, people. If you study the history, you find out you've been lied to. And to keep this short, I'm just gonna keep it at that. And look at the Mormon Truth Videos Gospel Topics Hub webpage. It's at .weebly.com, but if you Google it, you'll see that, or if you hit videos, you'll see loads of videos. But if you go to the website, page by page, you'll have, this one's on the first vision. This one's on LDS Apologetics. This one's on you know, the Gospel Topics Essays, which is part of that. This one's on restore, you know, Restoration of the Gospel, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is on why, you know, Negroes were not had the priesthood. This is why the DNA in the Book of Mormon don't match up. And uh, then we, uh, subject appropriate videos are found there. And like last night, I was starting to work on a web page to throw in a bunch of shorter ones. For those of you whose attention span 
is not adequate because you've been watching Facebook too much. Anyway, um, we're yeah. okay. I'm out. And put the edge back on. You can see that I'm putting the edge back on. Thanks for all your support.